Hi, move some more books. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you found your way here, okay? I hope you're finding your way through your day, okay? And if not, let us talk about some classic literature. So I have a few books here to show you guys today. These are all classics. Some of these are thrifted. Some of these are gifts from you. Thank you so much. Um, and some others I think are random ones, but anyway. I'm excited. I haven't done a classics, like a specifically classics haul in a while, so I'm just gonna get into it. Hopefully this can be a short, sweet little break in your day, talking about some books, maybe getting some recommendations, so let's get started. This first one was a gift from one of you guys, so thank you so much. It is gorgeous, it is beautiful, and that is The Journey to the West. This is an English translation by Anthony C. Yu of Journey to the West, which is a Chinese classic from the 16th century, and it tells the story of the 14-year pilgrimage of the monk that we are following through this epic tale. It says he fights demons who wish to eat him, he communes with spirits, and he traverses a land riddled with a multitude of obstacles, both real and fantastical. So essentially it's just this big epic adventure going through different trials and tasks, and it just sounds like it's gonna be really interesting. I don't have basically any experience reading um, older Chinese texts or Chinese classics or anything like that. So this one is definitely a huge, wonderful welcome to my shelf. Um, and I've heard this translation is really great. So thank you so much for sending this my way. This is wonderful. Um, so that is the journey to the West. This next one came in a book box from this business on Etsy that contacted me and asked if I wanted to try one of their boxes. It's like a book prescription box and they pick books that they think you will love. So for me, they gave The Italian by Anne Radcliffe, which is wonderful because I haven't read this yet. This cover absolutely kills me, but um, I read The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe a couple years ago, really thoroughly enjoyed it. So the Gothic is one of my favorite genre is my favorite things ever so i have no doubt that i will love 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 the italian so much more so this one is a bit different from the mysteries of udolfo and it has everything about anne Radcliffe's like gothic grimy disgust that i love because it says that it's filled with thwarted lovers ruined abbeys imprisonment and dark passages with an undercurrent of seething sexuality and presents us with a cunning villain so the villain in this one is a monk um the infamous monk skedoni and it's just full of like this darkness, this haunting atmosphere, um, and this very like pervasive gloom that Anne Radcliffe just loves to create. She's like her own fog machine, her own gloom and doom machine, and I love it. So I cannot wait to read some more Anne Radcliffe. I would love to do like a whole gothic thing in October maybe, so maybe keep an eye out for that, but that is the Italian. I know you guys are gonna yell at me, but I found another edition of Rilke's Letters to a Young Poet at a thrift store I was recently at, and of course I had to pick it up because this one is an edition that I don't have, although I do have this translation. This is by M.D. Herder Norton, so I do have two of these now, but this one was just really, really beautiful. And I have a whole bunch of editions now. This is one of my favorite books ever. Absolutely love. If you haven't read it, I think you would do your heart and your soul a favor if you did because this is Rilke sending letters to a young boy who's writing to him asking him if his verses are good, how do I become a good poet, and this boy is going to the same military school that Rilke attended when he was younger and that he eventually left. And so Rilke answers. He replies in letters, in a series of letters over a number of years, and he starts to develop his philosophy and his view on life and art and solitude and love and human relationships and nature on literally everything he just expounds upon in these letters. And it's wonderful. So much of like who he is is also embodied and brought to life in these letters. So I just, yeah, I can't speak about this enough. You guys know that though. So I got another edition. Next, uh, this one popped up in my P.O. box. I uh, didn't have a note, so I don't know who this is from, so please let me know who I am to thank ever so much for sending me To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Maybe you heard me say, I think, I, did I say this in my bookshelf tour or somewhere, that I wanted to read To the Lighthouse. That's kind of what I wanted to read from Virginia Woolf, just because To the Lighthouse was kind of the book that I heard from her first that existed, and I've kind of been thinking about it since then. So um, this is the really stunning Penguish, Penguish. Penguin English. Penguish. <laughs> Penguin English Library Edition. 
um, and it says it is an extraordinarily poignant evocation of a lost happiness that lives on in the memory. I really don't know, I don't have a good idea at all of what this is about, but I'd kind of like to keep it that way. This one's nice, short and sweet. I know we follow this family. I think they're on a vacation on the Isle of Skye and some things happen. That is that one. Thank you so much, whoever you are. This next one I also found thrifted and the little blurb on the back because it's a penguin classic that come with a little like one line blurb. It says, the sea goddess has ruffled me stripped me bare of my loved ones. Definitely gave me a lot of Odyssey vibes and I just was really excited to pick it up because I never heard of it before. So this is, is it Eagles Saga? I'm not sure if it's Eagles Saga? Eagles Saga? I don't know. So this is an Icelandic saga that recounts the tales of a warrior and his adventures. I believe there is like a duel with a Norwegian king and all of that exciting stuff. It tells the story of the long and brutal life of the 10th century warrior poet and farmer who is Egil, or Egil, or Egil. So he does a lot, he travels many different places. Um, I think it's kind of about him coming to life, coming into his own, maturing from like this youthful warrior kind of mindset, but then he becomes very wise. Like I said, there's like this running, I believe years long feud between him and the Norwegian king. I also know that he fights for the English king, in the Battle of Scotland. I just thought that now that I've read the Poetic Edda, I would love to read some more um, and some different, you know, Icelandic stuff. So that is the saga. This next one was a gift from Mary at Mary Among Stories for my birthday. Thank you so much because this is another gothic tale that I've been wanting to read for quite a long time. So she gifted me a Zofloya or The Moor by Charlotte Dacry. So this one is set in Venice in late 15th century, I believe. Yep. And this is like the judgment of Satan on our protagonist, who is this girl named Victoria. So she is kind of getting her life judged by Satan. So it's this huge tale apparently of like betrayal and lust and murder and sin and stuff like that. So Victoria is born and she's a super spoiled young girl born to a family of aristocrats. But then I have no idea how she gets either kidnapped or just whisked away or held in some period of captivity. And from there she descends into like the underworld of criminals. And apparently Satan is either like her mentor or just her guide. Kind of sounds like a reverse inferno kind of situation, which is really interesting. But um, from there she kind of has to work for him and stuff like that, which just sounds crazy. I also really love the discussion here because like I was talking about with the Italian, the back actually says that like she starts to portray Victoria in here as kind of like an Anne Radcliffe character, but then eventually she moves this character, this kind of like heroine, um, to a level beyond Anne Radcliffe and then even beyond Matthew Lewis's monk of Ambrosio in that gothic tale. So she becomes this figure of vice that's even beyond like Schedoni or um, Ambrosio and stuff like that. So that's just so interesting. But I also know there's a lot of things that were very much kind of cast aside and um, seen as a taboo when it was published because a lot of like her transgressions, Victoria's transgressions, um, is present and presented through her attraction and either relationship to her servant, who's also a woman. So I'm just really, really eager to see um, that relationship, that depiction, because it's not something you clearly get a lot of in classics of this caliber and age, so that is Zofloya. Next up, I was gifted another Chinese classic, and that is The Story of the Stone. This one is volume one. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to see my Chinese classics growing, and I cannot wait. I don't know where I should start, though. So if anyone has any knowledge on that front, please let me know, because Chinese classics is definitely something newer to me, so I'd love to get a little bit of info on where to start. But regardless, this is The Beautiful Story of the Stone, published in 1760, or written in 1760. It says, um, the first part of the story I also known as the golden days begins the tale of Bao Yu, a gentle young boy who prefers girls to Confucian studies and Bao Yu's two cousins. We have love affairs, sibling rivalries, political intrigues, and even murder within the context of the Buddhist understanding that earthly existence is an illusion and karma determines the shape of our lives. So this one is translated by David Hawkes. So ah, I keep saying I'm so excited, but I really, really am to get into ancient Chinese texts. Like I'm just so enamored and just so ready to read this. So this first volume is actually quite long. It's almost 500 pages, but then again, like the journey to the West is also quite long. So anyway, if you know where I should start, please do let me know because I would love to do maybe either a read along or conduct a reading vlog or something like that, because this is something 
um, I'm kind of just like learning that I'm so in love with. So yeah. Then we have Pygmalion by Bernard Shaw. This was given to me by Linda. Thank you so much. Um, very much looking forward to reading Pygmalion. This is one I haven't heard too much about. This is a play if I haven't already said that. It's also a play that I know next to nothing about at all. So quite excited to get into this. I've never read Bernard Shaw at all. So that is Pygmalion. Also for my birthday, Kira gifted me this beautiful edition of also one of her favorite classics, Emma, because she said she couldn't resist. Look at this cover. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know what edition this is. Oh, this is the Illuminated Classics edition, if you're wondering, but it is just gorgeous. I love it. I think it's perfect for this book as well. Um, I also read Emma a few years ago, but I'm so happy to have it in an edition where the print is definitely a bit bigger than my Wordsworth um, one. But if you've never read Emma by Jane Austen, we're following Emma, and she takes it upon herself to essentially be like the matchmaker of everyone in her life who she meets but she kind of disregards the fact that she's terrible at this matchmaking and more often than not causes strife and trouble and discord rather than peace and love and harmony you just kind of follow this atmosphere that jane austen has created it's extremely funny it's yeah it's just great so thank you so much kira um really really happy to add this like really gorgeous edition this one was also in that book box that i got sent so this is king solomon's minds by h Ryder haggard um, this is a classic I hadn't ever heard about somehow until I pulled it out of that box But since then I've learned that it has inspired a lot of the Indiana Jones films We are following a safari hunter Alan who agrees to help Sir Henry Curtis and Captain John Good search for King Solomon's legendary cache of diamonds So essentially they go looking for these diamonds, but they get caught up in the Sahara And I know there's something about like an evil sorceress or something. This honestly just sounds like a wild ride so that is King Solomon's Vines. This next one I also found at a thrift store and that is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I've been seeing a few of my friends pick this up recently so it got me excited to read some of Anne Bronte's work. Again, this is another classic I don't know too much about but I kind of want to keep it that way. Kind of how I like going into classics but um, I know we're following this girl named Helen and it follows I think like the disintegration of her marriage So she leaves her husband to essentially like kind of protect herself and her son I think because I believe her husband is an alcoholic and then it follows her living at um, Wildfell Hall where she is the tenant and I think she starts to kind of make a living for herself out of art Which is really exciting. The last few here, Linda also sent me, thank you so much, she sent me the monograph that Rilke wrote on August Rodin while he was staying in Paris and studying with him and learning so much from him, so I've yet to get my hands on this in my lifetime, although I've heard so much about it. it sounds so dramatic in my lifetime, but I'm just so happy to finally have this, his little thing of observations. Um, and what he's he's talking about with August Rodin. So this is Rilke like talking about his work and his influence like Rodin's influence and what he's doing and where he's living and like his philosophy on life. Um, Rodin was a huge inspiration in Rilke's own life and he wrote a lot of poetry while he was staying and working with Rodin in Paris. So I'm just yeah, I'm beyond excited to read this pick this up and just see Rilke like probably gushing more than not about this man who influenced him so, so much. All right, and finally, this is wonderful. This was also in my PO box. I believe that this is from Martin, so thank you so much. And you sent me the Penguin Classics book. This is the Penguin Classics book. This is the beautiful cloth bound, um, like, catalog essentially that pretty much goes through every single penguin publication ever um it tells you a lot about different like collections and stuff like that like it's just absolutely beautiful like look we even have one on ancient china so that i can kind of have a little look through and see um this is just so cool i didn't even know that this existed so thank you so much it is gorgeous it is beautiful and then it tells you a little bit about each maybe a little bit about the cover design why they chose it and it just essentially lets you know what's available in all the categories and what um all they've published so thank you so much this is wonderful and besides that it's extremely beautiful so thank you all right so that is the classics book haul for today yeah i'm excited i don't know which one i'm gonna read first i have so many books that i want to read now like it's actually ridiculous i think at this point maybe i should just do like an updated um tbr video and then let you guys maybe decide in the comments or like vote for whichever one or i could do like a comment 
randomizer. I don't know, I just have so many books to pick from now, but thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what other videos you would like to see um, or anything like that. So until then, ciao.